Hey, I'm Jeff Baumgartner with Light Reading, and we're here in Denver, Colorado for the Big 5G Show, and I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Sid Shandamalu with uh, Dish Network, so thanks for being with us here today. Uh, I thought we'd uh, just kind of talk big picture a little bit about you know the, the big national 5G network project you have going on, uh, and maybe start with a little bit about maybe a little bit of an update on where you are with the network rollout, the vision for the network for the rest of uh, 2021 and into 2022. Absolutely. And Jeff, thanks for having me here. It's sure. great to be here to see a lot of people around. Yep. Uh, I think on our build out, we have publicly said that we are going to be launching with Vegas, which would be our first market where we'll have a friendly user trial. I think I said today morning that we're going to find some issues as part of that trial and we're going to fix those issues. Uh, I think overall it's looking good. Uh, Vegas is just one of the markets we are saying publicly, but uh, in the background and in the last earnings call we mentioned that we have 30 other markets that we're building in parallel, there are a lot of sites coming up online. But most importantly, I think uh, I'm happy to report that we have made a great progress with our AWS build out. So recently, a few months ago, we made an announcement to go with AWS. And right now, most of our core network is on AWS today. We have onboarded many of the network functions. We're deploying right now in multiple regions to be able to launch nationwide. Uh, we're doing a testing at scale. Uh, we're finding few things, we're fixing them. I think we're very excited. The partners have come together very well. Everyone is excited about the cloud native architecture that we have, the vision. So overall, I say it's trying pretty good. And with you know the network, you're talking about the multiple markets. So you know, what, what can you say in terms of uh, kind of like where you are with tower side deployments and and you know geographically where you're you're kind of focused on you know at this point? Yeah, I think uh, we have a deal with uh, pretty much every major tower company in the country. I think we have a uh, Crown Castle, American Tower, SB, SBA, and others too. So we are well positioned. The, the equipment has been ordered. The, the sites are, as I said, uh, permitting is going on right now. It's an, it's an exercise that is distributed and it's going on nationwide in every market as we speak today. So what you're seeing is that nothing is sequential. It's more of a parallel effort. Uh, everyone is building in a distributed manner. And we'll see a lot more sites coming up online, getting tested. And you know we go through the actual market launch, ATP process, stuff like that. Yeah. But it's looking good. Okay, and you, you mentioned track. as part of the vision and the work you're doing right now is uh, what you're doing with AWS. So what's kind of the, the status there? Right? You, you're talking about already kind of onboarding, but uh, well, you know where are you there? I mean, <laughs> we, I mean, we started with uh, on-prem journey, right? We, our first uh, cloud partner was VMware, and we we're really happy with it. And uh, we did a lot of testing with VMware. We did a lot of automation. We had the telco cloud automation platform with us. And we, we basically worked with each of our partners, our ISV partners, that we call them. They had the software, we onboarded them, automated them, lifecycle management, we went through all that. But then when it came to start building at scale, now you need to have presence in every market. Now we're talking about distributed network. It's no longer in one or two data centers. Now we wanted a edge compute. We wanted a egress internet at the very edge. So that's why we decided to go with the public cloud. We, and AWS was a great partner. We went with them. Now as I said, we are pretty much uh, deploying in every region, every availability zones, and now we're also looking at the local zones that are coming up from AWS. Right. So we really have compute at the edge where it needs to be, closer to the subscribers. All right. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that first market, Las Vegas, yeah. right? Um, I think it was on the earnings call not too long ago. They were talking, they were talking about like maybe a 90-day beta, oh. something like that, before you move into like a commercial rollout. So, I mean, uh, you'll, you'll learn what you can learn, but what's your expectations kind of going into that? Uh, that's a very good question. I think that's the big thing that we have right now is that we also have flexibility. It's not just a pure 5G network, right? I think what we have is uh, we are able to launch this network in partnership with uh, AT&T and Timo. That's where it gets a little challenging and interesting. What you're talking about is a flexibility for a dish. As a you know, as an operator, we are, have the ability to move our consumers to one of the two networks on the location of our choice when we need it and as needed. That is a great benefit to us, but obviously it's, it has it is something that has never been done before. Now we are running a completely 5G standalone, right? AT&T is running a non-standalone network. Timo has a different flavor of it. So from interoperability, integration point of view, we understand what is needed, but again, the details are in the devil when we actually go implement and start testing. We may find things that 
we could not anticipate before. But again, we have fantastic partners. We know the players on both sides. I think we're, I think we can get it done. Okay. And the approach you're using, I mean, it's open ran, right? So what, what is the, tell me what you think is kind of the biggest benefit of that, you know, kind of heading into this and, and also, you know, the biggest challenge. I mean, this is still pretty new. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the biggest benefit, again, as I said, yep. front hall specification is awesome. Yep. The, the overall cost structure has come down significantly from a RAN uh, equipment point of view. We're really able to get the commercial of the shelf equipment. The compute is freely available right now. So all that's good stuff. The thing that excites me most is the RIC. I really look forward to getting more applications on our RIC platform. We're in, so, we're in discussion with so many RIC players right now, both for the platform side and the application. Real-time, non-real-time, I think is the future right now, where we are taking the intelligence and putting in a central location where you can throw all the compute you have on the RIC applications and they can make your network truly autonomous. Having said that, all this stuff is very new, right? I think. Uh, Integration challenges are quite, quite a lot. Uh, today, I was saying on the talk that usually when we used to talk about uh, integration in the legacy world, we used to be only worried about my 3GPP interoperability. Can my device get connected? Is it getting the right throughput? I'm able to do handover or not? But in addition to that, now I have to think about, do I have the right BIOS version? Is my NIC driver the right one? Is my software has the right drivers to work with DPDK? Does it have the right interface for Multus? Those are the new challenges that has never been exposed before as to a telco. Yeah. I mean, some of the IT or financial sectors, maybe they have been exposed to this, but telco is quite new and the workload characteristics of a telco is completely, as I said, many fold more complex compared to a typical IT workload. Now we're really seeing a melding of a telco with the cloud, with software, which makes things really interesting. At the same time, it makes a huge integration challenge. Mm -hmm. I think we're at the beginning of it, and we are, I think we have made quite a big strides in understanding what it is. Compared to one year ago, people are, have a good handle on what they need to do, but some way to go. Right, and, you, and during your talk, you, you mentioned the, uh, the role that you guys have kind of as the system, the master you have system be, integrator, yes. right? So, yeah, how is that going right now? Because you're working with a lot of suppliers, and, and sometimes you, you know, companies would depend on somebody else to handle that role. But I mean, I mean, everything's kind of, you know, you're, we, you have uh, full ownership of that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at Dish, we take the full ownership end to end. We have system integrator. So just to clarify, I think Dish is a prime system integrator where we're bringing everyone together, play nice with each other. We have a system integrator in the form of uh, say Nokia, who is our service integrator, like anything related to services, 3GPP voice, video, et cetera, Nokia is responsible for that. They do a fantastic job. Now we have a system integrator in form of VMware, who is coming from the platform side of you. That means any application I put on the platform, VMware is responsible to make it work. So we have a couple of system integrators, but as Dish, we are the ones who are bringing everyone together and said, hey guys, there's a release cycle that we all have to abide by. Everyone has to play nice to each other. It's good. No one can run faster, one cannot be slow. We all have to run together and we have to match our release cycles. Uh, we have to make sure we are talking to each other in the right APIs and we are following a particular protocols and standards. That is where we come in and we say, hey, we want to make sure everyone is playing nice and we are the PSI. Right. And since you, since this all has to interoperate, so yep. are you? Is that also your role? I mean, are you the are you the entity that's saying this is the last thing? I mean, are you making sure that everyone's interoperable and running those tests? Or you know, absolutely, how does that come together. Yes, yeah. we have instantiate. Actually, one of the benefits we have with AWS is that we have a lot of sandboxes and dev environments we have created which allows all the partners to come in and test against each other, which was not possible before. For example, I say, hey, I need to go test my new Kubernetes version. I need to test my new uh, BIOS version. We can simply instantiate within uh, AWS environment and say, hey guys, here is a sandbox. Why don't you test it out and see if you're working well to each other or not? Okay. So that's advantage. But again, yeah, we are at the end. Dish, as an operator, we are responsible for end-to-end. -end. Okay. I look forward to keeping tabs on, on your progress and I really appreciate your time today. Absolutely, great to be here, thank you. Thanks.